Welcome to Afternoon Garage. So today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to take one last look at this 1975 Firebird that I built. Kind of go over the body a little bit, maybe the interior. So hang out and watch, because this is going to be a good one. I'll talk a little bit about the body of this car. If you watched a previous episode, I talked about when I purchased this car, the guy had a plan for the car to build the body and then just have it just be straight muscle car all the way down. Now if you know anything about the Trans Ams, which people prefer, they have a vent here and some skirts up front, a three-piece skirt. And then in the rear, they have some flares in the back. So I decided to purchase a set of flares. After I got them, I kind of held them up and started fitting them and looking at them and I really didn't like how they looked. So I ended up not using them. I think personally, it's a little overdone. One thing that I did like the Trans Am have is this spoiler right here. I think it sits at the right angle and truly without it, well, the car looks just kind of goofy in the rear end. <laughs> this spoiler, while well, it's a bit much as far as an angle on new cars nowadays, I think it looks good with this 1970s Firebird. So I was kind of stuck, just kind of leaving it exactly like it was. I'm gonna put some aftermarket mirrors on here with some turn signals in the mirrors. I kept the originals so I can mount those on if I choose to later on. But I kind of wanted to do something that, you know, represents what I like in cars. Early on in my car career, I used to build mini trucks. The mini trucks I built, I had custom paint jobs, custom bodywork. Probably wasn't the best bodywork in the world, but hey, it looked good especially for something in the 80s. One thing that I was famous for was shaving the door handles here. So what you'd do is you'd cut the door handle out and you'd weld in a piece of sheet metal into the pocket and you'd slather bongo all over it, put an electronic solenoid in it, and you're on your way. Looks great. There's a number of problems with that, however. Number one, if the battery goes dead, you're not going to be able to get in your car. Back then when I was a kid, you know, you plan for Nothing. Nothing. So there's really no excuse for me to take any time to maybe put an emergency door release in there or anything. And good luck calling a locksmith out because when you start modifying the interior of the door and these rods that go up and down to actuate the door latch, well, who knows what you did and nobody's going to be able to get into the car for you. I can think of a time, my parents looking out the window, me with a locksmith trying to instruct this guy maybe how to get the car door open that I had shaved the door handles on. It was really funny to them, not so funny to me. Here's how the original door handle looked. They started using these door handles in 1970. They're kind of ugly, they're chrome, they stick out. So I decided to do something like this. You just put your finger press on the rear, pull the door right open. Operates well, and there's no goofiness going on with dead batteries and being locked out of your car. That's a wonderful thing. All I had to do was get a stainless steel pocket, figure out what I was going to do for the door latch mechanism, weld it all together, and then weld the door handle inside of the door. They turned out really well. So I was really happy with what I did. I came up with a shaved door handle look without any of the shaved door handle problems. Opening the door, you can see I used a door panel from a 1978 Firebird. Really like the armrest, the design of the, this year of the door panel. So I kind of went with it. The earlier ones kind of had a pocket down below and I really wasn't very happy with that. So I figured I could change it up a little bit. It wouldn't hurt. Now when I first saw this car, I was really happy. It had most all the options I would ever want in the interior. It had factory power windows. That's a big option back in the 70s. Didn't have factory door locks, but that's okay because I added actuators and I hooked it up to my alarm system anyway. The dash you see here is kind of reminiscent of an engine turn dash from a Trans Am. Once again, there's your factory AC there. Those two buttons right there that you don't recognize are the loud buttons. Originally when I got this dash, it had kind of a wood grain look to it. These instruments are VDOs. These are special order instruments and they're weird in many different ways. You can't get these here in the States. I think these actually came from Germany. And what's really strange about them is they're in mile per hour. 
These are 100 millimeter gauges, and they actually fit the factory holes in the dash. So all I had to do was make some cutouts for the turn signals and that kind of thing. But man, I think this looks really good. You can barely even tell that there's an aftermarket things going on here in the dash. It looks so original. And yet I have my digitally calibrated speedometer, odometer, so I can mate it with that six speed manual I have in here. I had to replace the cardboard headliner up here. Another thing to talk about with the interior of this car, that I added all the modern conveniences of a newer car. Now, I wanted to make it look like it was directly out of the 70s. So it had a cassette stereo on it, I took that out, and I put an AM radio on it from the period. It's actually from 1975, this AM radio. It doesn't really do anything, but it looks like it fits the spot. The other thing I added was a simple Viper alarm. So you can have power door locks. Keep your stuff locked up. The other thing I did was I put a Bluetooth stereo system in it. Let's look into that. So this car doesn't even look like it has a stereo system in it. So it's really easy to operate. All you have to do is turn the key on, wait for the appropriate tone, take your phone out, and press play. It's about as easy as it gets. And it gets loud. Loud enough for me. Controls are right here. More or less volume. You can even take a phone call. Center console had to be changed as well. I had to make room for that six-speed manual transmission I put in there. Normally, in a manual car, it has a big opening in the console. Kind of looks a little, well, 1970s. This looks much different. I did keep the location for the original power window switches, but I mounted the shifter much far rearward. So it's easily reachable by somebody resting their arm onto the glove box here in the center console. But I also added some switches here. These switches are part of a line lock system. Now, when you talk about line lock, you're talking about locking up the wheels. This is the rear wheels. This is actually controlled by a cable, so it has an e-brake cable, just like any other. Let's go up to the front and see what's up there. Here we have the brake kit that I bought for the front. It has two piston calipers, 13 inch rotors, and a two inch drop spindle. So it's kind of all in one package. You get the big brakes, then you get the drop spindle all at once. So you can bring the suspension down where it needs to be. And it stops like crazy. But that's not going to be all you need to improve your brake system. You're going to also need a master cylinder, a brake booster, and a proportioning valve that will work to replace those rear drum brakes to rear disc brakes. This is called a line lock. Now what this does is it locks the front wheels up. So you can do, oh I don't know, launch control, or maybe a burnout. And to give you a little direction, some instruction on how to do your burnout correctly, I have a laminated card. It explains exactly what you need to do to lock out these front wheels. That's about it for now in this car. Done a lot of talking about what I did to this car, and I really wanted to kind of take it out and do a burnout. I'll have to save that for another time. I have some videos I plan on making in the future some projects that I have lined up. Be working on uh, electric car, be working on the solstice again, making a video on the lift and some auto body technique videos. So if you like that kind of content, stay tuned. And just remember, you can do all things.